Hey everyone, we're back in Los Alamos with Elliot from the Bradbury Science Museum to learn about the different jobs here during the past and present. Where are we right now? So right now we're standing in front of the uh, barracks and former dormitories of the WACs. Who are these WACs? Well, actually, let me go show you inside. WAC stands for Women's Army Corps, and they were an auxiliary unit of the U.S. Army. Today, women are integrated into the U.S. military, but back then, each branch of the military had an auxiliary unit for women. Like Hanford and Oak Ridge, Los Alamos needed an influx of workers during the war, and women helped fill these needs both in a civilian and military capacity across the lab. Could you tell us about this place? So this barracks was actually designed by the U.S. military. Remember when we were over at the Fuller Lodge building and we were yeah. talking about just how much construction had to go on? Well, the military was building facilities like this. This was a barracks that was actually designed to house members of the wax. And so people would be spending the evenings here and then going to their jobs in downtown in Los Alamos. So whack women filled the variety of jobs here during World War II, what kind of, or how the allow change after World War II is over? Well, that's a really good question because with all of this construction and all the stuff that was built up here, almost immediately after the end of the Second World War, uh, Los Alamos pretty much dropped off. Uh, from about a peak of 6,000 people working at Los Alamos during the height of the Manhattan Project, less than a thousand remained by the end of 1946. However, between the end of the Second World War and the end of 1946, this was still part of the Manhattan Project and this was still run by the Army. And so General Groves actually had a directive for the people that remained at Los Alamos that they were to continue developing and improving the nation's nuclear deterrent. And why don't we go over to the Bradbury Science Museum and we can talk a little bit more about that. Let's do it. So what kind of work is at the lab today? So the work that's done at Los Alamos National Laboratory basically covers every single scientific discipline that you can imagine. Everything from metallurgy and chemistry and theoretical physics to biology and nanotechnology as well. There are mm -hmm. over 11,000 people that work at the laboratory and if you can name the discipline, they <laughs> do that work. One that always comes to mind is my sister who's actually a geologist that works at Los Alamos National Laboratory. In addition to working with volcanology and seismology, she's responsible for doing a lot of de seismic detection of underground nuclear tests that other nations might be doing. So what kind of career paths at the lab today? So the career paths are basically as diverse as the people that work here. Uh, you've got, like I said, you've got physicists, you've got chemists, you've got engineers, people that are involved in some of the largest structures of the, of the universe, astrophysicists, and then mm -hmm. people that are involved in some of the smallest items, such <laughs> as nanotechnology. So if you name it, Los Alamos is doing it. Thank you so much for everything today. I learned a lot. My pleasure, Isaac. The dropping of the atomic bomb proves to be one of the most important events in the 20th century. Right here in the United States, scientific experimentation took us from the first sustained chain reaction, which couldn't even power a light bulb in late 1942, to the test and usage of destructive atomic weapons less than three years later. The pace of innovation is staggering. These efforts not only involved famous scientists, but 130,000 average Americans many of them not even knowing where the details of their work may lead. As some communities were moved out of these sites, new ones were constructed almost overnight to meet unprecedented production goals. Rapid migration and growth sometimes meant societal tension and inequity. The bomb's history and legacy is complicated, and still is to this day. 75 years later, many continue to debate the usage of bombs on Japan. After World War II's end, the stockpile of weapons, thousands of times more powerful than Little Boy and Fat Man, dominated Cold War strategy. Today, national labs like Los Alamos address nuclear threats while also pioneering amazing science. We can both marvel at the remarkable advancements while also considering their consequences, many of which still resonate today. <laughs>